Let's derive the von Neumann equation. First, let's express the density matrix denoted by rho as a linear combination of ket bras. So rho depends on time. I'm going to put a time dependence over here. And I'm going to express this as a sum over some index j. And in this sum, we're going to have probabilities p sub j. So this is a p and this is rho. It's a very important distinction. Rho is the density matrix and p over here, these p sub j's, they are probabilities. Then we need the ket bra combinations. So here we're going to have a ket psi sub j, which is also dependent on time. And then we're going to have a bra psi sub j, which depends on time. So this ket bra combination is not the same as a bra ket combination. If we had bra followed by ket, that would be an inner product. This is not an inner product. We're using this to construct the density matrix. And these coefficients in the linear combination, they are probabilities. So this is a probabilistic mixture of quantum states. Because we have the state at a particular time t, we can also rewrite this as the initial state at t equals zero uh, and a unitary operator, which is responsible for the time evolution. So let's do that over here. What we can do is we still have this summation sign over j, and we still have these probabilities, p sub j. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a unitary time evolution operator over here. And this unitary time evolution operator is going to be evaluated at time t. And then we're going to have the initial state at t equals zero. So this is psi j at zero. And we also want to have, this is the ket version over here, we also want to have the bra version. So the bra version is also going to be psi j evaluated at t equals zero. And we're going to have the unitary operator acting from the right, but we also need to take the Hermitian adjoint. So we can denote that by a dagger. So this dagger is the Hermitian adjoint. And we evaluate this at t. So this is at time equals t. And when this acts on this ket, we get back this state at time equals t. And when this Hermitian adjoint of the unitary operator acts on this bra, we get back this bra state at time equals t. What we can also do is move these unitary operators outside of the summation. So let's do that underneath. We can write this as the unitary operator evaluated at t. And then we have this summation. So that's the sum over j of p j, and then we have this ket bra combination. That's psi j evaluated at zero, and the bra version of psi j evaluated at zero. And we can close this bracket. So this is the bracket over here. And then on the right hand side, we have u dagger as a function of time, and we're evaluating it at t. So what is this thing in the middle? Now that we've pulled out these unitary operators, we're left with this object in the middle. And you can see that it has the exact same format as this definition up here. What is the difference? Well, the difference is zero over here. So instead of t, instead of some general time t, we have the time zero. So this is t equals zero. So we can rewrite this as u at t, rho at t equals zero. That's what this thing in the middle is. And finally, u dagger and t over here. So this is at time t. So how do we describe the time evolution of this density matrix, this density operator? Well, we sandwich it between these unitaries. And this unitary over here, it is responsible for time evolution in quantum mechanics. So this is a very beautiful expression. If we were just dealing with a state, like this catch over here, all we would have to do is act with the time evolution unitary operator. And that 
would be responsible for time evolution. But if we're dealing with a density operator or a density matrix, we have to sandwich it between the unitary operator and its Hermitian adjoint, which is denoted by this dagger symbol over here. So now that we understand the definition of this density matrix, we can derive the von Neumann equation. I'm going to do that below here. So the von Neumann equation is concerned with the time derivative of rho. And we can write that like this. I'm going to use this condensed notation. So this little partial t, that's the same as d dt. So we're taking the time derivative of rho as a function of time. So another notation that you may see is a little dot above this row. That is also describing the time derivative. The time derivative tells us how this object changes with respect to time. So when we find what this is equal to, we're going to have an equation that describes the time evolution of the density matrix. So first of all, we can apply this time derivative to this definition. We can apply the time derivative to this catch bra combination. And when we do that, we're going to have to use the product rule. So the product rule is going to consider first this catch and then this bra. So we're going to differentiate this with respect to time. We're going to leave this unchanged. And then we're going to add to that uh, this unchanged. And this is going to get differentiated with respect to time. So let's write that out in full. So first, we're going to have the sum over some index j of pj. And I'll put this in brackets over here. We're, we're just going to uh, differentiate. We're going to take the time derivative of psi j as a function of time. And what we're going to do is we're just going to leave this term alone. So this bra is going to remain unchanged. So we're going to have psi j as a function of time. And this bracket over here is telling us we're just considering this uh, as the time derivative acting on this ket. Now, let's add that to the other term where we leave the ket alone. So we still have the sum over j, and we have pj. Uh, then we're going to leave this ket alone. So we're going to have psi j as a function of time. And we'll put this in brackets. We're going to have the time derivative of the bra version of psi j as a function of time. So now we've expanded this out using the product rule. So we have this thing in the brackets over here and this thing in the brackets. We can use the Schrodinger equation to work out what this is equivalent to. The Schrodinger equation uh, describes the time evolution of states with the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is going to act on these states and it's equivalent to taking the time derivative up to some constants, which include i and h bar. So let's rewrite everything here using the Schrodinger equation. I'll do this underneath. So we're going to have the sum over j of pj. And inside these brackets, we're going to have minus i over h bar times the Hamiltonian, which is denoted by capital H, acting on psi j as a function of time. And this bra is just going to be left alone. We're going to have psi j as a function of time. And what's going to happen over here? Well, this is the catch version of the Schrodinger equation. So this is equivalent to this. But what we have to do is take the complex conjugate when we're dealing with the bra version. So that's going to give us the sum over j times pj, psi j as a function of t that's inside this ket. And then this bra is going to turn into, this is not going to be a minus, it's going to be a plus because we're taking the Hermitian adjoint. So we're going to have i over h bar times, we need the Hamiltonian to act from the right. So we're going to have psi j as a function of time, and the Hamiltonian is acting from the right. Just like over here, we, uh, when we deal with the bra version of the equation, we have to act from the right-hand side. And you might notice that up here we have a Hermitian adjoint. So when we act on the right-hand side, we have to take the Hermitian adjoint of this operator. And we have actually done that. But the Hermitian adjoint has no effect on the Hamiltonian. That's because the Hamiltonian is Hermitian. It's a Hermitian operator. That's because energy is an observable. And this Hamiltonian operator, it corresponds to the observable that we call energy. 
So this is also the Schrodinger equation. It's just the bra version of the Schrodinger equation. And this is the catch version of the Schrodinger equation. Now let's pull out coefficients and also let's get the Hamiltonians out of the summations. So that's going to make this a little more clear. So first of all, let's pull out minus i on h bar. That's a common factor we're going to pull out of both of these uh, summations. So then put some big brackets over here. We're going to have the Hamiltonian. We need to pull that out from the left. Here the Hamiltonian is acting from the left hand side. So we're going to have h times, we'll put some smaller brackets over here. We're going to have the sum over j, then pj, psi j as a function of time, and then the bra version of psi j as a function of time. And we'll close the brackets over here. So that's everything from this term over here. We've pulled out the minus i on h bar. And then, because we've pulled out a minus i on h bar, here we have a plus, we have to add in an extra minus sign. So this is an extra minus sign. And then I'll put this in some brackets over here. We're going to have the sum over this index j, pj. And then we're going to have the catch bra combination again. So this is psi j in the catch bra combination. And on the right hand side, we can pull out the Hamiltonian. That's the Hamiltonian over here. And I'll close this with some big brackets. So we have this big bracket and this big bracket. And then we have these smaller brackets inside here. And what is this object that we see inside of the small brackets here and over here? Well, that is the density matrix or the density operator. It is this definition up here. So we can write this as minus i on h bar times the Hamiltonian. And on the right hand side of the Hamiltonian, we have the density operator at time t. So this is at time t. And what about over here? Well, now we have the density operator on the left hand side, and then we have the Hamiltonian. And we can close the brackets over here. This is by definition the commutator. So we can rewrite this as minus i on h bar times the commutator of h with the density operator. So this is the von Neumann equation. And I'll write this below over here because it's very special. We have the time derivative of the density operator as a function of time is equal to minus i on h bar times the commutator of the Hamiltonian with this density operator, rho as a function of time. Alternatively, we can multiply both sides by uh, this combination, this little coefficient, and that's going to give us i h bar times the time derivative of rho as a function of time is equal to the commutator of h with rho. And here we go. This is very similar to the Schrodinger equation. In fact, it is analogous to the Schrodinger equation. Where the Schrodinger equation deals with this state, psi, the von Neumann equation deals with the density operator rho. So this is going to describe the time evolution of the density operator. So hopefully this derivation was helpful and you can find other videos just like this in the quantum mechanics playlist.